Pretty How long have you known Stanhope? What year did you guys meet? Did you meet in L.A.? No. I'm, I met him out here. 1991. Get out. I'm lying to you. 1992. <laughs> I oh, started comedy June of 91. I won the contest December 18th of 91. And I talked the management at the broker in out of the fucking magician. He, they had a magician who was a host. He was really old. And he was just fucking terrible. And people would throw shit at him. Really? And I pointed it out to the management. So they gave him movie night. And they gave me comedy night. Thought, not to hurt his feelings. Like, oh, listen, we're going to put you on movie night. Do a couple tricks. Introduce the movies. And then don't let the door hit in the ass. <laughs> His name was like Magico. Or so. He was <laughs> Yeah. Magico. It was fucking horrid. So I started hosting at the Broker Inn on Tuesday nights right. for the Bex Comedy Night, 1992. I had like eight minutes of material. And the, eight minutes? Every Tuesday, a new headline. Can you imagine Joey Diaz with only eight minutes to his name? Oh, my material. God. Oh, my God. So you do the same eight minutes every week? No, because the same customers came in every week. I had already figured it out. After six months of comedy, that the same motherfuckers came in, because not only did you get to watch comedy for fifteen dollars, you got a steak, a baked potato, mm. and a fucking salad. That's a good deal. Okay, so people would come in at seven thirty, eat, and then the comedy show would start about eight fifteen, eight twenty. Cocktails too. They got open bar and like open no, bar. No, 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 oh, no. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was known for being a big pickup joint on Wednesday nights. Okay, Wednesday was uh, there. Mingle night from fine. They put shrimp bowls out, and people would go in there with their fingers and eat shrimp. And oh my god! Pe- oh yeah, yeah, shrimp. When you went to the broker in those days and sat down to eat dinner, you know how they bring you bread at restaurants. They brought you a shrimp bowl, mm. and you sat there, and they had a curtain so you could give your wife a stabbing in there, or sucky sucky, <laughs> or do a little twist. A stabbing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can tuck some dick into your wife. Oh yeah, yeah. This is some crazy shit, but that's where I. Is it one- still there? Still, I don't know if it's still there. You have to look it up. One night, on a Tuesday night, I went there, and there was a little kid with long hair, skinny, young, and his name was Doug Stanhope, and he was featuring, and we started talking, and in those days, it was a complete run. Yeah. So it was Boulder on Tuesday. You had Wednesday off, and then you had to go to a fucked up part of Colorado, like fucked up, Craig, Colorado. Which is where? This is, I have no idea, and but on the itinerary, when I did comedy there six years later, on the itinerary for that night, it said, this room is active. Do not, in, uh, uh, what's that when somebody says something to you and you say something back? Oh, like interact? Do Don't not interact. interact. Get off the stage, go to your hotel room, and let management call you. No, really? Why? Because it's, it's like and the, when I got there, out, or is it? When I got there, it was, it was you on the stage, 20 feet of a fucking open room, and then there was a glass, and they would watch you from the other side of the fucking glass. Really? Because there had been so many fucking problems at this place with comedians, and comedians would lash out at them. And Craig is like the side, at that time, I don't know the population now, at that time, it was a, a Thursday night that paid Tribble a lot of money, like $3,000 a week. They thought they were getting fucking Milton Berle. And they were getting Uncle Joey Diaz. Mil- Uncle Milty. They got all Joey Diaz with his eight minutes of comedy coming in. So they, you, you had Craig on Thursday, <laughs> you know, like Colorado Springs on Friday, and you had something on Saturday. But that Tuesday night, that Wednesday hurts you, bro. Yeah. Because if you're a feature, trip only gives you 50 bucks. You got 85 for the night, you pick up 50. Yeah. A hotel in those days is 25. You got a Subway sandwich, a six pack of beer, and a yeah, pack you're of breaking cigarettes. Even. And you're breaking fucking even. A lot of those triples were always breaking even. You're always it's breaking you even. You just cut your chops Yeah, though. because there's a by the way during the week. Oh, you, but, you're doing that to, because you want stage yeah, time. Yeah, you want stage and time. And you, you want to learn the from money people. that you get will get you to and from and probably something to eat and maybe, maybe a place to sleep. And that's it. You don't come back with money, but you come back better at comedy and seasoned. It's funny how. Uh, so a I, little used, bit. I used to look at the comics. I had just gotten divorced. I had a two-bedroom house. I had a living room. I had a couch. I had a TV. And I would look at how cool the features were. Or the headliner. Mm-hmm. You know, if they were dynamite guys, like I got along with and stuff, I go, what are you saying tonight? And they go, oh, I'm going to think about getting a hotel for 60 bucks. I go, keep the 60. I was a, I was a starving comic. I, no, I, I wasn't starving yet. I still had credit card money. I still had the condo because I was living in it. And I would bring them over and basically pick their minds. Let them sleep 
I just have weed. If they want to do a couple bumps, I get a couple bumps from them. And we wake up in the morning, they take a shower, and they go to Craig, Colorado. Mm. And Stan Hope was one of those guys I met. First time he came as a feature. <laughs> Eight months later, he came back as a headliner. He had just done uh, the big show at the time, Inside the Improv. Uh, what was the name of the Night at the Improv. Night at the Improv. Yeah. He had just done that, and now he was a headliner. And he was on his way. I could uh, tell when I saw him eight months later. I'm like, this kid's on his way. You saw the difference between feature to headlining. There was something in, in him that changed. Yeah. And then I didn't see him. We lost contact. I got heavily into comedy, but I kept missing him. Then you, him, and Herschel Walker all ran into each other. <laughs> yeah, I, I kept missing him. I kept missing Doug Stanhope. Doug Stanhope had just been here three weeks ago. He ripped up this room. Mm -hmm. At this time, it's 96, 97. 90, no, 94 at this time. I'm feeling, you know, I'm okay. I've been doing comedy for three years on paper, but solid for 18 months like a warrior. Yeah. I got something to work with. People, are st I'm still not bringing down the house, but I get my moments. You know what I'm saying? And it's mm -hmm. only going to get better. I'm into it. I write. I, you know, I do my thing. I'm living in my car. And I'm in Seattle. I go to Seattle. And I actually start featuring up there. Like, that's the first. I, I featured, my first feature weekend was for Lori Kill Martin. She's a runner mm, on I know her. I know exactly who she is. And, uh. She still the gigs around every now and then. Yeah, yeah. You she's at her? the store and shit. And, yeah. I, and I stayed there and I joined, did the contest and I semi finaled. And, and no, there's a bunch of shit that, uh, uh, went, uh, whatever. And then 96 came and Dog, the hottest name in comedy, was Doug Stanton. Mm. Like, you heard about this from fucking everywhere. Mm -hmm. Then he won the San Francisco County oh, that, I met him right after that. And bam, that was it. Yeah. That was it. I was his style the same then? Like, was he doing the same stuff? Craziness. Craziness-ly. So here's the story, guys. I'm in Seattle. I'm doing all right as a feature act. You know, I'm not paying my bills. I'm trying to sell weed. I'm, I'm hooking up as a bookmaker. Like I told you, Josh mm -hmm. Booth has an office. I got a 1-800 number. I'm fronting sports information. I'm taking numbers. I'm working it. You know, I'm trying to make come out. I got an addiction. I got a girlfriend who's a stripper who I like how she sucks dick. I got to come up with 200 for a dinner once in a while. Yeah. So, boom, I got a feature spot on a Friday. No, I'm lying to you. This is in Seattle. This is in Seattle. Guess who's coming to town June like 5th or 6th? Herschel Walker. Doug Stanley. <laughs> And I had already made plans on the 6th to go camping with the girl I was dating. Yeah. We had already had a campsite and the truck and the whole fucking thing. And, and I'll never forget. I said, you know what? I'm a civilian this Friday night. In those days, either you worked Sunday through Thursday, but unless you were working, you had the weekend off. That's just that's the level you're at. Yeah. And you only got one week in the month where you worked in those days. You were just striving for feature spots. And every once in a while, you would call me and go, Joey, I got a headlining gig. They're featuring 50 bucks in the hotel room. Mm -hmm. We got to drive to Portland. Let's fucking do it. You know, that's how you learn to get into the club. Sure. You know? Featuring is the way in the club. Into club. People ask me that all the time. Like, you know, do, do your thing and then find somebody who's headlining and get, and get them to feature for you. That's the way in. That's the way they want you to get in. That, no, that's the Come way Come with somebody that's kind of vouching for you. I'll watch you work for the weekend, and I'll decide if I want to, you know, have you come out. And then they work with you in a way. They do. They start bringing you as a co-headliner. Yep. They have you fill the holidays. So Friday night, Doug Stanhope's in town. Like June 5th or 6th of 1996. And at that time, I had worked with a lot of good acts in Seattle, you know, like headliners. And I'm like, okay. I'm in good fucking company. Mitch was up there at the time. Yeah. Uh, Tom Rhodes would go up there. There was a lot of comics that were out in the up and up. And, dog, I'm going to tell you how it is. That motherfucker got on stage for a late show on Friday night. And 20 years later, I'm going to tell you, I had never seen anything like that. Really? He tore that room mm -hmm. in half. But at that time, he was really wild. Mm -hmm. That's when he was doing his bucket of vaginas joke. Yeah. That's when he was doing his, uh, you know, just 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 the raw shit in the world. You know, with the bikini, the the bikini was somewhere in there. She was so fat, it was like flaw, dental flaws or mm -hmm. whatever. He was just throwing fucking heat, 
And I got to tell you something. I left there that night, and I doubted myself as a comedian. That's when you know. I, I, yeah, that's that was me many times. Like that Saturday, like, like that Saturday and Sunday, I was like, I, maybe I can start being an electrician again because I could. I'll never be able to do what I just saw this weekend. Mm -hmm. And I processed it, and I go, "That's the goal. That's the guy. That's the guy you you got to emulate. That's the guy that that thing that's wrong is right." See what I'm saying? That's great. That thing that's wrong, it's what's right there. That's yep. what's going to get them to the top, and that's the style you want to have. Yeah. That thing that's wrong, that's right. You know what? It's very easy for me to look in the mirror and go, you know what? I'm a handsome 25-year-old. Let me go up there, talk about this, 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 and this, and take my fucking chances, not have any chance. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.